Greetings everybody and welcome to my 7 days to die alpha 21 xml modding tutorial. In the last episode we covered how to add and remove recipes and also how to put those recipes onto different workstations as well as looking at a few passive effects. Now in this episode I do want to continue our work on recipes but I haven't shown you yet how to add or remove ingredients from recipes that already exist and I've also not shown you how to alter recipes that already exist either. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at a few more complicated examples with some new types of uh, XPath syntax and as well as some new types of commands. Currently, we've looked at append and a little bit of remove, but I'm going to be showing you a couple more in these following episodes. So guys, without any further ado, let's get started. <laughs> I've opened up the vanilla recipes file because the first thing I want to show you is how to add a new ingredient to an already existing recipe. Now you may ask how this is different than before. In the last episodes we've added completely new recipes from scratch, but in this episode we're going to be focusing on altering vanilla recipes by adding and removing ingredients. So I've gone ahead and found the recipe for the bedroll right here in the vanilla file. And you can see that it's called bedroll block variant helper. Now remember, there's lots of different bedrolls you can choose from with all the different colors, but this recipe essentially allows you to craft the one that then lets you select the one you want to place down later. So that's why it's called variant helper. You might just think, why is it just not called bedroll? But that's why. Essentially, it just allows you to then select the colors with a couple of bits of code in the items file. But we'll get to that in a little bit uh, later on in the series. For now, we're going to go ahead and and look at adding a new ingredient to this recipe. Now the first thing I'm going to do is add this into the vanilla file and then we're going to go ahead and talk about how we can do that using our modlet. So what I want to do is to our bedroll here we're going to go ahead and we're just going to make a direct alteration to the vanilla file and we're going to go ahead and do we're going to go ahead and do a new ingredient so we're going to say ingredient here and we're going to put name and this time I want to add some cloth to it right now luckily for me in this bed 02 up here we've actually got resource cloth right there so I'm going to go ahead and add some cloth and let's go ahead and add maybe maybe it'll take five cloth uh, to go ahead and craft this. Now, essentially, if we go ahead and save this change now and we open up seven days, the bedroll recipe will now require 20 plant fibers or sorry, 10 plant fibers. I swear it used to be 20 and it will also require cloth as well. And that will change directly. Now, of course, this is the terrain. This is a change to the vanilla file and we don't want to do that. We actually want to go ahead and do this with our modeler. So how are we going to go and do that? Well, we can actually use the append syntax that we've used from before, but this time we have to go ahead and use a different X path and we're not appending an entire recipe this time, we're appending an ingredient to a recipe. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find an X path that's going to take us inside this recipe right here. Now remember, when you use the append syntax, it essentially, you give it a point to look into, it then goes inside the tag and then adds your thing onto the end, right? So this is the thing we've added on the end, our new ingredient right here. And we need to go ahead and essentially find this tag right here with this particular recipe name. So we're going to go ahead and go into our modded recipes folder. And what you want to do is make sure you come to the bottom of it just below where it says forward slash configs like here. And we're going to go ahead and add a new comment here. And I'm going to say adding a new ingredient to a vanilla recipe. We're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to close out the comment like this. So the first thing we need to do is find the X path that's going to take us into here. So first of all, we need to start from the root of the document. Now, remember in the recipes file, the root element is recipes, right? So we're going to go forward slash. So we start from the top. So we're just going to work on the X path for now. And then we're just going to go recipes. And that's going to essentially select the root element with all the recipes inside it. So currently that's just going to go ahead and do that. It's going to select everything. Now what we want to do is select every individual recipe inside the recipes tag. So to go a level deeper, we use a forward slash and then we want to select the recipe tags like this. Now, currently what it's going to do is the pointer is going to go ahead and select every individual recipe. It's going to select this one because it's a recipe tag. It'll select this one and it will select this one because it's a recipe tag. It also select this one and every single recipe it will go ahead and select. 
but we want to go ahead and use a lookup to only select this one. So remember how we talked about using conditions on our XPath to go ahead and look at attributes or look at other things inside it to go ahead and point to the one we want. So this recipe here has a name of Bedroll Block Variant Helper. I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy this name. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this one here and we're gonna go back into our file here. So what we want to do for our X path, we want to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and open a set of angle brackets after the word recipe, because this is essentially saying we want to find all recipes with the recipe underneath it. But then we want to make this recipe have a condition. And the condition is that we want to find an attribute and we want to find the recipe whose name attribute as a value, and we're gonna use single quotes for this, and between those single quotes, we're gonna put the value of bedroll block variant helper. This X path right here that we've just written will essentially make the pointer just select this one right here, and it won't go ahead and select any other recipes. So essentially what it's gonna do is it's gonna go, okay, here's a recipe tag, but is the name attribute bedroll block variant helper? No, it's bed02. So the pointer is gonna skip past this one, and then it's going to go to this one and it's going to say, is this one a recipe? Yes, it is. Does it have a name of bedroll block variant helper? Yes, it does. So the pointer then will go ahead and select this thing right here. Then all we need to do is go ahead and use this X path inside an append. And then we can essentially put the ingredient that we want right here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this ingredient that we just added directly to the vanilla file. I'm going to cut this up from here. And I'm going to go ahead then just hold down Control Z to undo all the changes so that the vanilla file goes back to normal. So essentially what we're going to do is this X path is going to look inside this recipe tag, going to go, OK, we want to append a new ingredient to the end of it, and it's going to go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead and write the rest of the XML that we're going to need to make this work. So now we're back in here. Here is our X path. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a few lines here, and I'm going to paste our ingredient just down here. And we're going to go ahead and type append. So angle bracket append and then close the angle bracket like that. And it's going to go ahead and give you a closing tag like this. Now I'm going to give myself a couple of lines and this ingredient that I just posted here, I'm going to go ahead and cut it from here and paste it between these two append tags. And I'm going to indent it as well, just so we can read it a little bit more clearly. So essentially, this is going to append this ingredient. However, we've not told it where we want it to append to. So that's where the X path is going to come in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and type in the word X path. So we're going to make an X path attribute and then we're going to put a set of double quotes. And between those double quotes, I'm going to take my X path that we just wrote here. We're going to cut this X path from here and I'm going to go ahead and paste it right there. So now if we walk through this fully, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and first it's going to look at this X path and it's going to say, OK, we're going to look for the recipe whose name is bedroll block variant helper. And then it's going to go ahead and add this ingredient to the end of the tags inside it. So what it's going to do is going to go ahead and grab this thing right here. It's going to go ahead and take this. And then when we go ahead into our recipes file, it's going to say, OK, I found the recipes tag. Go inside the recipes tag, go to the end of the ingredients list and plop it right there. And that's exactly what this X path is going to do for us with the append tag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hop into game now. So let's make sure we've saved our recipes here. We're going to go ahead and hop into the game and I'm going to go ahead and load this up. So let's go ahead and load this up here. We're going to let it all start up and then we're going to go and load, load into a continued world. And we should see that when we type in the bedroll recipe, that the ingredients have now been updated with our new cloth one. So let's go ahead and just continue the world. We're going to pop into here and let's see if this has worked. And remember, we want to make sure that our mod has loaded properly. So we're going to do, as you guys know, the F1 test just to make sure everything is working and that we don't have any issues. So remember, we're looking out for yellow text. But as before, if it has anything to do with the animator, then that's something that doesn't really matter. But here we go. Everything seems to have loaded just fine. The world is loading up. Everything seems to be going fine. And here we go. We're now back in our test world. And here we go. Right, so everything looking fine. No red text, only the animated yellow text. And now we can go ahead and check our bedroll recipe. So if we go into here now, you can see that there we go. We've got the plant fibers. We need 10 of those. But as you can see now, we now have the cloth fragment like this. 
and we can now say that it now needs five cloth fragments to also operate as well. So in order to craft this thing now, we need both of these things. Now, of course, we would need to update the quest log because as you can see, it's not actually showing you that in the quest, but that is gonna come in a future episode. So just bear in mind that if you change any vanilla recipes that also have a quest tied to them, you will need to do an update in the quests XML to make that reflect as well. So currently it's just gonna say for us to gather plant fibers and then craft a bedroll, but we would also need to go ahead and update our quest to go ahead and gather cloth as well. But that's gonna be for an episode far, far into the future. So keep an eye out for that one. I'm now back into the recipes file and I'm gonna go ahead and reload the one from the config stump that you guys can see that this X path has worked. Let's go ahead and do it here. We're gonna reload this config stump file and then I'm just gonna type into my find window. If you haven't got this, press control F. I'm going to type in bedroll and let's see what pops up. So as you can see now, you can see that the bedroll block variant helper recipe is there. And you can see now that this ingredient name equals resource cloth that we added before has been appended by my first modeler. So you can see that the appendix path has worked right there. Now, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and add some recipes to a new one. Now, this cellar door right here, this cellar door double wood, does have a cool recipe with just 10 wood, but honestly, you'd probably have more things in the cellar door, like some hinges, there'd probably be some nails to hold the wood together. So I think we should add a couple of extra ingredients to this one to make this thing make more sense. I think I want to add two ingredients to this thing. I want to go ahead and add some nails to it, and then I think we're going to go ahead and add some springs to it as well. So first of all, I'm going to do this manually like this, and we're going to go ahead and do this first one. So we're going to go ahead and go ingredient name, and that's going to be resource nail. And as you can see, my uh, code complete is actually finding it for me as well, which is really good. And we'll say this thing requires, let's say it requires 12 nails. So there's actually, you know, lots of, uh, lots of wood in here. So nails would definitely be needed as well. And then let's go ahead and add a spring as well. So we'll go ingredient and then name. And that's going to be, I think this one just comes under resource spring and it does. So we're going to add one of those and we're going to say, we probably want one spring loaded hinge for each door. So that'll probably be two springs just like that. And there we go. So these are our two new ingredients as we would add them to the vanilla file. So let's go ahead and cut these from here. And then I'm going to just hold down control Z to undo all my changes. And then into our modded recipes file here, I'm just going to go ahead and paste them down here. Okay. So we're just going to leave them there, paste them right there. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and find out how to make an X path to find this recipe for the cellar door double wood. So let's go ahead and copy this name here. And then we're gonna go ahead and just paste this up here. This is the thing we're trying to find. So to go ahead and find the X path, remember we start with the topmost root tag, which is recipes. So we type forward slash and then recipes like that. And then we want to find, first of all, we need to go down to the recipe level, which is one layer below it. So to go down a level, we go another forward slash, and then we're gonna type in recipe, just like this. And then just like before, we want to go ahead and do a lookup or a condition on this recipe. So we want to fulfill this recipe on the condition that it has an attribute, and then it has a name attribute. So you take the at sign and then just type the word name. And then that's gotta be equal to and then between two single quotes, let's go ahead and cut this cellar door double wood. And we're going to go ahead and paste it right over here. There we go. So that's the X path that we need to do. So all we need to do now is go ahead. We're going to type in append. And then we're going to close that tag. And you'll see that it gives us a closing one automatically thanks to XML tools. And I'm going to go ahead and put one of these down here. And then let's go ahead and get one of our ingredients here. So we're going to cut the ingredient from here. I'm going to go ahead and paste it right in there. And then all we need to do is specify the X path, right? So we need to tell it where we're appending to. So let's go ahead and type X path equals. And then between two double quotes this time, let's get the X path we just had. We're going to go ahead and cut it like that. And we're going to go ahead and paste it in here. There we go. And now we also need to do it for the other ingredient as well. So we're going to go ahead and essentially copy this whole thing because it's pretty much got everything we want. But then we're going to essentially swap the ingredient over for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one out and then we're going to go ahead and put the spring inside this one. There we go. So now, as you can see, I've written two append operations to this cellar door double wood. The first one is going to add the nails and the second one is going to add the springs. So if we go out into our seven days again, I'm just going to go ahead and close the well down and reopen it because it's actually a little bit quicker this way. And I need to also make sure I've saved my file as well. Then we're going to go ahead and reopen this. 
And once this opens up a second time, again, let's do the F1 test, make sure that we didn't get any yellow text for XPath errors. Looks like everything is fine so far. We're going to load this up again. And then what we should find is when we come in here that the cellar door now has nails and springs as part of its recipe. So here we go, world is loaded. So we'll come out of the console and let's go into here and let's type in, uh, I think we're just going to type in cellar door. Uh, there we go, wood cellar door, here we go. And as you can see, there it is. We've got the wood that it had before, but now we also require some nails and some springs in order to go ahead and craft this thing. Now I'm going to come back out of this into the notepad again, and we're going to go ahead and talk about how we can optimize this a little bit. Now, if we go ahead and load up our recipes, our one from the config dump here, and then I'm going to go ahead and type in again cellar door so I can just find it. Um, so let me just type in cellar. Uh, there we go, cellar door, double wood. Now you can see that for each of these things, it's saying, hey, I added this via an append, right? So I added the first one with an append, and then I added the second one with an append. So you can verify that this thing has worked. However, what we've done essentially is we've done two append operations on the exact same X path. And we can actually go ahead and condense this down to make it a bit more efficient. So remember how I said the less of these append and remove things that we have to do to our mod, the more beneficial it will be for your load time. Essentially, it will allow it to reload a little bit faster. So as you can see, each of these appends is just adding one ingredient. However, I could just add both ingredients to that single append. So what we could do is I'm actually going to go ahead and comment this stuff out here. So I'm going to go ahead and type this here. And then we're going to go ahead and do this one here. So all I've done is I've done an angle bracket, an exclamation mark, and two dashes in front of this stuff. And then I've done two dashes and a closing angle bracket behind it all. And as you can see, it's just commented all this stuff out. So this stuff now will no longer apply when we reload into our weld. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these. I'm going to copy one of these like this. And then I'm also going to say, um, I'm going to, in this comment, say, I'm going to say, um, quote, bad way to add two or more ingredients so this is like the this is this is kind of the bad way to do it so it's not a terrible way because you know it will still work but it's not the most efficient way then i'm going to make another comment down here and i'm going to say quote good way to add two or more ingredients just like this so i'm going to do that and then i'm going to close this comment directly and i'm going to paste that first one here so what i could do is I could get this uh, spring ingredient right here. I could get this one from here. I'm going to copy it and I'm just going to go ahead and paste it below my first one just like that. So you can see now that it's going to add both of these things into the cellar door double wood because essentially they both use the exact same X path anyway, right? So all it's going to do is instead of doing it in two separate append operations, it's now going to go ahead and do it in one, which is really, really good. So if I go ahead now and save this again, and then we're going to go ahead and once again reload our game. Let's go ahead and come out of here and then we shall continue one more time. What we should find is now that we've done that, everything should go ahead and append at once. So do an F1 test to make sure that there's no yellow errors. There shouldn't be though because we didn't change our X path at all. So not really too worried about any errors this time around because we just did a very, very quick change. But what we should find now is when the world loads again, we're going to go ahead and look for our cellar door as well. So we'll go for cellar door. There's the wooden one. And as you can see, everything is exactly the same. So you can see that I can add two or more ingredients as well, just using one X path. So there is a currently a maximum visible ingredient count of five. So if recipe already has like four ingredients, you may only be able to add one that stays visible, but you can use some UI mods to go ahead and alter the look of this so it can display more. There are certain mods that do it. I know Hyder's Gnamod UI does have uh, room for 10 ingredients, and there's a couple of other mods that do this as well. But the vanilla UI can only essentially access five of these ingredients. However, if we go ahead now and look at our notepad again and we're going to go ahead and reload this file you'll see that once i've reloaded it you can see everything is exactly the same you can see that both of these elements have still been appended but this time we've only used one of those append operations therefore we've just nudged down our load time very slightly which means our mod now is more efficient and it loads faster which is awesome now that we've gone ahead and added some ingredients to some recipes Let's talk about how we will go ahead and remove some ingredients from recipes. For example, let's have a look at the car battery here. As you can see, we have three ingredients in here. We have lead, we have acid, 
and we have polymers. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we didn't need to use polymers to craft this battery and we could just rely on lead and acid? There is a way we can actually go ahead and remove this ingredient. What we need to do first of all is we need to make an X path that's going to go ahead and target not just the car battery recipe, but the ingredient that we want to remove inside it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back into my modded file here and we're going to go ahead and uh, tag down a bit and we're going to make a new comment here and saying how to remove an ingredient from a recipe. The first thing we need to do is come up with an X path to get to our ingredient that we want to remove. So the first thing we need to do is, of course, the root node of this document is the recipes root, right? So we need to first of all type in forward slash and then we start with recipes. And then to get down a level, we need to go forward slash and then we go to every recipe like this. And then we need to go ahead and specify the recipe, right? So we need to specify the recipe that we want to remove the ingredient from, and then we want to specify the ingredient that we want to remove inside it. So we need to make sure that the pointer only points to this recipe with car battery. So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and copy this one here. And then just like before, we want to go ahead and type in two square brackets here and between them, we're gonna put an at sign. So that means this recipe has to have an attribute and it has to have a name attribute. So we're going to type at name equals, and then between these two single quotes after the equal sign, we're going to go ahead and paste car battery. So, so far this X path will go ahead and find this whole recipe right here. Now, if we want to find an ingredient, well, first of all, how do we find all the ingredients inside this recipe? Well, first of all, we just need to go down a level because the ingredients are within the recipe itself. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a forward slash to get down a level. And then we want to go and find an ingredient like this. So we're going to go ahead and type an ingredient just like this. And this will essentially allow the pointer to find it will go and point to this ingredient. It will then also go and point to this ingredient. And it will also go ahead and point to this ingredient right here. Now, the one thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and tell it which of these ingredients that we want. Now, there's two ways we can do this. There's a kind of a meh way, which is going to cause issues down the line if your mod interacts with others. But then there is a more accurate way, which means therefore you will always be removing the correct ingredient. So I'll show you the kind of meh way first. And this was what I would not recommend. As you can see, the ingredient we have one, two and three like this. So essentially, we want to go ahead and remove the third ingredient. So all we do is we go ahead and open up some brackets like this and we just type in three. And essentially that will go ahead and target the third ingredient and then we would remove it. But why is this not a good practice? Well, let's say that a mod loaded before yours and then it goes ahead and it adds an ingredient at the top of this list. There is actually a way to add it. So let's just go and assume that a mod comes in and it adds another ingredient up here. So we're just gonna just do that as our sample ingredient. Now what's gonna happen is when your X path comes in, it's gonna go and say, okay, remove the third ingredient. And it's actually gonna say, well, this one now is the third ingredient. And instead of removing the scrap polymers, it's actually gonna remove the acid. So this is why it's not a good idea to use a positional lookup like this. So instead, what we're going to do is on the ingredient here, we still want to go ahead and use the square brackets. But instead of looking at for the ingredient via a position, why don't we go ahead and just like with the recipe, look up the ingredient via its name attribute, right? Because as you can see, each one of these ingredients have a different name attribute. So we can just target the one that we want. So in this case, the name is just resource scrap polymers. So just like before, just like with the recipe above it, we can go ahead and type in an at sign between these two brackets. And then we want to look for a name attribute in this ingredient that is equal to resource scrap polymers. Now remember to close your single quotes and make sure that you've closed both of these square brackets. So this X path is a little bit longer, but now what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and look for the recipe with the name of car battery. It's going to find this one. Then it's going to say, OK, look at all the ingredients. So it's going to go this one, this one, this one. And it's going to say, OK, does this ingredient have a name of resource scrap polymers? No. So it's going to ignore that one. It's going to then move to this one and says, how about this one? It's going to say, nope. So it's going to ignore that one. But then it's going to look at this one and say, does this one have a name of resource scrap polymers? And it's going to go, yes, it is. And therefore, it's going to go ahead and target only this ingredient inside this recipe. So now we've essentially pinpointed the ingredient that we want to remove. 
So how do we go ahead and remove it? Well, just like removing recipes, we just use the remove operation. So we're gonna go ahead and type in an angle bracket and we're gonna type in remove. And this remove one is actually a self-closing tag. So what I'm gonna do, instead of typing an angle bracket, I'm gonna leave a space and I'm gonna type forward slash and a closing angle bracket, just like this. So now we're telling it to remove something, but now we just need to tell it what to remove. And of course, we've already got the X path that does that. So if I go ahead and type in an X path like this, we go X path equals, and then we're gonna open up two double quotes like that. And then between them, I'm gonna take my X path right here, and we're gonna go ahead and cut it from there, and we're gonna paste it right into there. And then we've instructed it to remove that resource scrap polymers from the battery. So if we go ahead and save this now, I'm gonna go ahead and load seven days again, and we're gonna go and pop into the world one more time, and we're gonna check the recipe for the car battery to see what's happened. Now you definitely wanna use the F1 test on this, just to make sure that your X path doesn't throw up any yellow text, because as, as you saw, this X path was a little bit longer and a little bit more complicated. As you can see, there were several name lookups that we had to do. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, we got the spelling of those things right. Now, of course, I copy pasted, so we don't have to worry about any misspellings. But if you're making your own and then you just go ahead and type them manually, those things can always creep in. So we're back in the world. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, the car battery right here. Now, if we go into the recipe now, you can see that it requires the electrician perk. However, if we look at the actual recipe here, you can see there is the lead, there is the bottle of acid, but there are no longer any requirements for scrap polymers. So now we've successfully removed those from the game. Let's go ahead and try it with something else. So I'm gonna go back in here, but before I do, I will show you that that's actually been removed from the config dump one as well. So if we go ahead and type in battery, so we'll go ahead and type in battery here. And I think what we need to do is find the actual recipe whose name is battery. There it is. And as you can see now, you can see it says element removed by my first modlet. And it will actually show you the X path in this case that removed it. So you can see that we targeted the ingredient whose name equals resource scrap polymers inside the car battery right there. So it'll actually show you the X path that removed it, which is really good. So let's go ahead and try another one. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually undo all these changes here because I don't want that to affect my vanilla files. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and come down. Let's go ahead and remove, this time I want to remove two ingredients from one of these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at the chemistry station. Let's go ahead and grab that. So let's go ahead and do our find here. And I'm gonna just type in chemistry and hopefully that will go ahead and pull out the recipe. There it is right here. So wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to worry about acid or cooking pots in the chemistry station? The beaker kind of makes sense, and then the forged iron and the metal pipes also kind of make sense because that's used to make the actual apparatus on the station. However, the pots and the acid, well, you don't need the acid for the chemistry station, right? That kind of doesn't really make too much sense. And you know, it's a whopping five acid, so it's not that easy to craft. What we can do is we can go ahead and in a similar way, we can remove it. So let's go ahead and do it one by one. So let's go ahead, first of all, and we need to target an X path that's gonna give us the cooking pot inside the chemistry station. So as before, we need to start from the top. So we're gonna go ahead and start from the recipes, and then we need to go down into the recipe. And then in the recipe, we want to go ahead and find the recipe whose name attribute is chemistry station. I'm gonna copy this. So remember to look at to look up an attribute, we type in between these brackets, we type an at, and then we're gonna go name equals, and then between two single quotes, we're gonna go ahead and put the name chemistry station right here. So this X path is gonna go ahead and pull out this recipe only. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and find the ingredient whose name is tool cooking pot. So just like before, we're gonna go ahead and go down a layer because remember the ingredients are inside the recipes in the next level down. So to go a level down, we type in a forward slash and then we're gonna go and look at the ingredient. Now currently this X path will pull out every single ingredient, but we don't want that. We just want the specific one. So we're gonna go ahead and put in some angle brackets again, or sorry, square brackets. And then we're gonna type in at because we want to look at an attribute in the ingredient whose name equals and then again between two single quotes we're going to just going to go ahead and paste the tool cooking pot like that and once we got that that's essentially the x path we need so essentially it's going to now come in here it's going to find the chemistry station it's going to look through all these ingredients and say which one is the cooking pot this one is right here and then all we need to do is wrap that into a remove operation and it will remove it so let's go ahead and do this we're going to go ahead and type 
we're gonna undo a, a, a layer above here so let's be clear we're gonna type uh open angle bracket and then remove i remember this is a self-closing tag so we'll close it like this and then inside the tag we're gonna type xpath equals and then put the double quotes in and then all we need to do is go ahead and copy this xpath and we're gonna cut it from here and we're gonna go ahead and paste it right there there we go and as you can see once you've done that this will go ahead and remove that first ingredient so let's go ahead and do it for the second ingredient as well which was the acid we also wanted to get rid of this one as well so to remove the acid we're going to go ahead and start by finding the chemistry station recipe so again we start with the recipes so slash recipes and then we need to find every recipe so we go slash recipe to go a level down and then we want to find the recipe who has a name attribute of chemistry station so just like before we're going to type at name equals and then between those two single quotes we're going to go ahead and put chemistry station then we need to go ahead and find all the ingredients within that so we're going to type an ingredient and that will point to each one but then we also want to find the ingredient whose name this time is resource acid so i'm going to go ahead and double click that and then copy it with Control c and then just as before we type in at name and then between these two single quotes we're going to go ahead and paste that in and that is essentially going to go ahead and find the acid so it will find the chemistry station it will loop through all these ingredients inside it and go this is the acid one this is the one it will now point to and then as before all we need to do is wrap that into a remove operation so we're going to go ahead and type in remove and then xpath equals and then we're going to go ahead and close this as a self-closing uh, self-closing tag and then between those two quotes there we're going to go ahead and cut this xpath and we're going to go ahead and paste it right there then we're going to save it and let's go ahead and check that this has now worked in game so we're going to go ahead and exit out of here and then as before we're going to go back into the game and then we're going to start this up we'll let the game load and of course we want to make sure that we've done the f1 test just in case any of our x paths happen to be formatted incorrectly I made the PC stutter a little bit there. It always seems to do that on load when I'm doing the F1 test. I guess it doesn't like showing the console to me sometimes. But let's go ahead and load the world again. World is now loaded. And then once we pop in again, we're going to go ahead and search for the chemistry station. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's type in chemistry station. There we go. And as you can see now, it's going to go ahead and require, require the workstations to unlock it. But as you can see, it only requires a beaker, some forged iron and some short iron pipes now. And as you can see, we've now successfully removed the other two ingredients from that chemistry station. Now, if we go into the config dump, we can also see that that's happened there. So we'll go into the config dump right here and let's just type in chemistry. Well, chemistry station, let's see if it pulls out the recipe. There it is. And as you can see, it's left in the first, the second and the fourth one. But then it's showing you the X path that we used to go ahead and remove both of these. And as you can see, we've had to use two remove operations to go ahead and get rid of this. But is there a way we can actually condense these two remove operations down into one? In fact, there actually is. So if you're worried about your load times and you want to go ahead and condense some of this down, we can actually use another X path. And just like in the last episode when we were removing a recipe and we wanted to remove two recipes, we used the logical or syntax to do that. So what we're going to do, the way we combine these X paths into one, essentially, you know, you can do this if you've got most of the X paths are exactly the same, but then your last bit right here is just different. This is a name of cooking pot and this is a name of resource acid. You can actually combine this and this right here together into one single lookup, which will actually save you a bit of processing power when your mod loads, which is great. So let's go ahead and copy the X path up to that point. So we'll copy to the X path up to the point where it's the same, which is up to here. And we're going to go ahead and put this down like this. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and open the brackets and we're going to type in the word or and leave a space either side. And then all you need to do is take your first ingredient right here. Just copy what's between this first set of square brackets here and put it in this first area and then copy what's in these second brackets here and put it in the second one. Now, as you can see, we've actually combined these two X paths into one. So now it's going to go ahead and it's going to say, OK, look at the chemistry station and it's going to go into here and it's going to say, OK, now look at all the ingredients. Does this ingredient here have a name of tool cooking pot or resource acid? No, it doesn't. 
Then it's going to say, how about this one? Does it have the name of tool cooking pot or resource asset? And it's going to go, no, it doesn't. Then it's going to get to this one and it does, it's going to say, does this one have the name of tool cooking pot or resource asset? And it goes, yes. So it's going to target this one. And then it's going to go to this one. How about this one? Does it have the name of tool cooking pot or resource acid? No, it doesn't. So it's going to ignore this one. And then it's going to go to this one and it's going to say, does this one have the name of tool cooking pot or resource acid? Yes, it does. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to make your pointer have two locations. It's going to point to both of these two ingredients right there to go ahead and remove. So now if we go ahead and I'm actually going to comment out this one here. So we're going to say, we're going to make a comment here. We're going to say how to remove two or more ingredients from a recipe. Uh, and this is going to be in brackets, less efficient, but more readable because it is slightly more readable this way. And that's the way that we're going to do it. I'm also going to go ahead and just comment this out. So I'm going to make sure that these two are commented out here because we're going to do the same thing now with one X bar. So I'm going to say under here, we're going to make another comment here. We're going to start another one and we're going to say how to remove two or more ingredients from a recipe. Uh, one X bar uh, more efficient. This is the more efficient way to do it. And then we're going to close that comment here. And essentially all we've got to do is put this X path into the tag, right? So we're going to go ahead and do this and I'm going to go ahead and type remove. I remember that's a self closing tag. So we close it and then I'm going to type X path equals put in the double quotes like that. And then all I've got to do is go ahead and grab this guy right here. We're going to cut it from there and paste it right in there. So what we should find now is if I save this, I'm going to go ahead and reload the game again. So we're going to go come out of here and we're going to reload the game one more time. So remember, you don't have to X out completely. You can just continue it because we're only doing XML changes. We'll do the F1 test one more time. And you should see that on the surface, nothing has actually changed. So what we should see is no change from before. We should still have that exact same chemistry station recipe with the two removed ingredients, which is really good. So we'll go ahead and sort this out, let that come in. And there we go. So no errors apart from the GUI or the go-to state on the animator, which is fine. Then let's go ahead and open this and we'll type in chemistry station. Um, there it is, chemistry station right there, if I can type. And as you can see now, if we go to the ingredients, you can now see that here, nothing has changed. So our X path that we've done in one go has done exactly the same thing. Now, if I go ahead and go back into our config dump version of the recipes file, and then we'll reload this, you can see now that it doesn't really look that different, but you can see that it's now showing the same X path has removed both of these. So you can see that this, this X path here removed both the cooking pot and the acid from here. So now you know how to remove one or more ingredients and better still, you know the most efficient way to do it if you're worried about your mods load times. The next thing I wanna show you guys is how to go ahead and remove the same set of ingredients from several recipes together. As you can see right here, I've got the iron and the steel fire axe right here, and I wanna go ahead and remove the leather and the duct tape from both of these. Now, believe it or not, we can actually do this in one X path, but we're gonna start out simple, and we're gonna go ahead and write it in a set of four X paths, and then I'll show you how to condense it down into one. So first of all, let's go ahead and remove the leather from the iron fire axe. Now, of course, it's got a very long name, so you want to copy this because there's lots of different capitalization changes. And we want to go ahead and first of all, get the X path to the fire axe, right? So we're going to go ahead and type recipes. So slash recipes first, then go into the recipe. And then we want to, in the square brackets, we want to find a name attribute of that recipe. And we want to find the recipe whose name equals melee tool axe t1 iron fire axe and that will go ahead and point us to this recipe now we're going to want to go ahead and find the ingredient in there whose name is resource leather right so all we do after that square bracket we go to we then go and type slash ingredient i need to type in slash recipe there my bad and then we want to find the name which is equal to resource leather just like that now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and wrap that into a remove X path, right? So here we go. So we're going to go ahead and put all this. Uh, I'm going to open up a angle bracket in front of this. Type in remove X path equals open a quote like that. Close a quote on the other side of it and then do the forward slash and close the angle bracket. 
Now, because the next X path is going to be very similar, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, right? So we can copy this. And then if we want to go ahead and remove the leather from this thing, or sorry, the duct tape from this thing now, we can just change the ingredient lookup on the second X path to go ahead and do resource duct tape. So essentially, these two X paths will go ahead and remove both this and this. But then remember, we can make that a little bit more efficient because we can combine these two X paths into one. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and copy both of these X paths up until the point where there's a change. So as you can see, we've got up to the ingredient is the same, but then what's inside that bracket is different, right? So we want to go ahead and copy up to here. And I'm going to go and paste it here like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up a square bracket type a space, then the word or, and then a space again. Then I'm going to go ahead and copy the resource leather one from this bracket like that. And I'm going to go ahead and put it right here. And then I'm also going to copy the resource duct tape from that one and go ahead and put it there. There we go. So this essentially will combine them both down into one X path. So then I can go ahead and remove this one right here. And then I'll replace that X path with this guy. So we're going to go ahead and cut this guy from here. And then we'll replace the X path between these two double quotes with this one. So just like before, what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and re remove both the leather and the duct tape from the iron fire axe. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do, do the same for the steel one as well. Now this one has a different name. So we're going to copy this name here. And just like before, well, if we think about it, most of this X path is going to be the same for the steel axe, right? So we're going to start with remove. I'll make a remove thing here and I'm going to type X path and then just do my quotes and close it. And the thing we want to look for is the steel axe. Now, essentially inside the steel axe, the ingredient part of the X path is the same, right? So the ingredients are still going to be targeting these two things. The only thing that changes is the recipe name, right? So if I go ahead and take this one out from here, I'm going to copy this X path that we have into this one. And then all I need to do is change the fire axe tier one to the steel axe tier two. So I can essentially cut this from here. And then between these two single quotes, I can go ahead and replace it with that one. Now you can see that as we've done these two, this will go ahead and remove the leather and the duct tape from both the fire axe and the steel axe. However, we can actually combine these X paths down again. As before, we're going to go ahead and look at what is similar between these X paths. So what we can do is we're going to go and say, OK, well, at first you can see this part is the, is the same as this part. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to put it here. Then I'm going to go ahead and open my square brackets like this. But we also know that this part at the end of it is also the same. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and open these two and copy it. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this on the end. So what we should have now is we've got recipes and recipe, and then we've got this square bracket right here with nothing in it. Now, as we did before with the ingredients, I'm going to go ahead and type the word or like this and leave a space. Then all I need to do is to make it go ahead and target all these things in one go. I'm going to copy the melee tool fire axe from this one and put it in this first section like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy the steel axe like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste it after the ore in this space right here. So then we've combined all of those four individual X paths that we would have had to write into one. So I'm going to cut that from here, remove one of these operations like this, and then I'm going to go ahead and paste this like that. So now let me walk you through what this X path does so you can understand it. It might look a little bit intimidating, but let's go ahead and walk through it. So first of all, it's going to start with recipes. It's going to select every recipe here from this one. So this will, will essentially say every recipe. Then it's going to say, OK, is this recipe melee tool iron axe or is it melee tool steel axe? And as you can see, it's going to get to this recipe and it's going to say, no, it's not. Oh, sorry, it's going to get sorry this recipe here. It's going to say, no, this is the melee tool repair tool. So it's not going to select this one, but it's going to go into this one here and it's going to say, is this melee tool fire axe or melee tool steel axe? And it's going to go, yes, it is. It is one of those. So essentially the pointer at this point is going to go ahead and say, yes, this is the one we want. So I'm going to put a little X here just to represent where the pointer is. 
And then it's also going to go into this one and it's going to say, is this one called Melee Tool Iron Axe or Melee Tool Steel Axe? And it's going to go, yes, it is. So the pointer is actually going to go into two places like this. So, the, so now you've got a pointer at both this recipe and this recipe. Now it's going to go ahead and loop through the ingredients of those recipes that we're pointing to. And then is it going to say, are each of these ingredients leather or duct tape? So what it's going to do is it's going to go for each ingredient. So for both of these recipes that it now points to, it's going to look at both of these first ingredients and go, OK, are either of these ingredients leather or duct tape? No. So it's going to go to the second one of each one. It's going to go, how about these ones? Are either of these second ingredients the, uh, the leather or duct tape? No, it's not. Then it's going to go to the third one in each one. And it's going to go, how about this one? Are any of these leather or duct tape? And it's going to go, ah, well, this one right here is leather. So one of the pointers is going to be here. And then in this one, well, of course, this is just wood. Then it's going to go to the fourth ingredient and say, is this leather or duct tape? It's going to go, well, OK, this one here is duct tape. So we're going to point to this ingredient and it's going to go into this one and then say, well, this one is leather. So it's going to go into here, right? So that's where the point is going to be here so far. And then it's going to say, well, this one has no more ingredients. But in this one, there, there is one more. Is this one leather or duct tape? And it's going to go, yes, it is. So now we've essentially made and then the point is going to then move inside this for each one. So the point is no longer going to be pointing to the recipes, but it's now going to be pointing to each of these ingredients inside the recipes that we've specified. So now your pointer is going to be pointing into four individual places. And then when you use the remove X path, each of these places that the pointer is at will go ahead and get removed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save this. And again, we're going to load up and we're going to see now that for both of the iron and steel fire axes, both of these things should now have everything removed. So let's go ahead and continue game like this. We'll go into here. And then we'll go ahead and of course do the F1 test because as we've just written a very long X path for this one, we want to make sure that there are no issues. But essentially we've targeted all of those ingredients just with a single remove X path, which is actually really, really good. So now you don't have to worry about targeting individual things. You can target multiple ingredients from several recipes, which is super nice. So now if we look at the axes, so if I just type in ax here, you can see that I've got the iron fire ax and this one, as you can see, now just requires forged iron and wood. And then we've got the steel axe. And this one just requires steel tool parts, forged steel and wood. But none of these, which used to have leather and duct tape, now require them. So if we go ahead and go into our config dumps again, we're going to go ahead and reload these. So let me go ahead and reload that. And let's just type in fire axe. And that should go ahead and pull it out. There we go. And as you can see, both the both of the fire axe and the steel axe have had these things removed. And you can see where the pointer ended up, just like we showed up here in our recipes file. The pointer ended up at these ingredients here and these ingredients here. And then you can see in our config dump that the pointer has then gone ahead and said element removed by my first model with that X path. So you can see that exactly where we said the pointer would be. These things have now gone ahead and got removed. In a previous episode, we talked about how to remove individual recipes from the game. However, there are some recipes that appear on several crafting stations, and maybe you only want to remove it from one of those crafting stations. A good example of this is the glue recipe. Now, as you guys know, you can craft glue on both the campfire and the chemistry station. And our goal is to remove the glue just from the campfire. But how will we go ahead and do that? First of all, let's go ahead and find a recipe for glue. So that's under, so that's going to be recipe name equals, and that's going to be resource glue. And then we should find one just by typing that in. And as you can see, here we go. So you can see that this is the recipe that we want to go ahead and remove this one right here. So let's go ahead and go ahead and find an X path that's going to target this recipe. So how will we do that? Well, as before, we start from the root of the document, which is slash recipes. And then we need to go ahead and find every recipe. And then we need to do a lookup on that recipe as we've done before. And we're going to go ahead and find the recipe whose name equals resource glue, right? So we need to look at the attributes of the recipe. Then we go ahead and type in the name attribute equals resource glue. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this into a remove X path like this. 
just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and close that tag. So this remove XPath is going to go ahead and remove the glue recipe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in uh, another comment just above it and say, how to remove a recipe from one crafting station, but not the others. Just like that. So there we go. So currently, we're going to go ahead and see what happens. So let's go ahead and go into seven days one more time. We're going to go into game and then we're going to go ahead and exit out and we're going to go reload it. And then here we go. So we've saved it. Let's go ahead and do the F1 test and we'll go ahead and make sure this all loads properly. Everything seems fine. But there we go. My computer's hanging again. I don't know why it does it, but here we go. Everything seems to be applying. No real yellow text coming in at that mod point. So everything seems like it's going to be fine. Once the world loads, we're going to go ahead and see if we can find the glue recipe. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we go. Let's go and type in glue and see what happens. Well, this might be a problem. As you can see, the glue has been completely removed. But as you can see, the one for the chemistry station hasn't remained. We only wanted to remove the one from the campfire. Let's go and find out why that happened. Let's go ahead and look at the X path a bit more closely and see what it's doing. So. First of all, we started with the recipes and then we chose a recipe whose name was resource glue. OK, so let's have a look at the vanilla file and see what this will do. So it's going to come down here and it's going to go. Is this recipe having a name attribute of resource glue? No, it doesn't. How about this one? Yes, it does. So it's going to go ahead and set our pointer to this recipe right here. So it's going to go ahead and just put a little pointer right there. Then. It doesn't stop. It actually moves down and goes, does this recipe have a name of resource glue? Yes, it does. So what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and then put the pointer here as well. So now that the pointer is in both of these locations, both of these recipes got removed. However, we only wanted the pointer to end up at this recipe. So how can we go ahead and distinguish which is the recipe that we wanted to remove? As you can see, using the name attribute got us pretty close. But as you can see, there is something else that does differ between these two, namely that this one has a craft area of a campfire and that this one has a craft area of a chemistry station. So how do we make it so that we want a recipe whose name attribute is resource glue and its craft area attribute equals campfire? That's actually much easier than it sounds, and it actually reads exactly like we would think. So in our recipe lookup here, we can specify just like we did with the or keyword, we can actually specify an and keyword. Now, when it's uh, the difference between or and and is or will look for anything that fulfills this condition on the left or this condition on the right. And if either of those two things or both are true, the pointer will then go to it. The AND condition, though, is different. It means that you need to have both of these things before it will go ahead and put the pointer there. So what we want to do is we want to find a recipe whose name is resource glue and whose craft area attributes. So I'm going to type in at craft underscore area equals campfire. Right. So the AND essentially means that the recipe has to have both the name of resource glue and it has to have the craft area of campfire. If neither of the, if one of these things is not true or neither of them are true, then it will go ahead and skip over. So let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to go ahead and back here and show you what I mean now. So let's go ahead and remove these uh, little pointer marks here. So we're just going to get rid of them and let's go ahead and walk through this X path again. So first of all, it's going to say, does this recipe have a name of resource glue? And does it have a craft area of campfire? And it's going to say, no, the name is resource for steel and the craft area is the forge. So it's not going to take that one. Then it's going to go to this one as it's going to say, does this recipe have the name of resource glue? And let's go. This part is true. Then it says also, does this recipe have a craft area of campfire? And this is also true. So both this and this are true. So therefore, this recipe will be marked by the pointer. It goes, OK, so both of those things are true for that recipe. So this is one we want. Then it's going to come to this next one. Remember, the pointer doesn't stop until it gets to the end of the document. So it's going to come to this one and it's going to go and say, does this recipe have a name of resource glue? It's going to go, yeah, it does. OK, well, that's great. But then it's going to say, 
does this recipe have a craft area of campfire? And it's going to go, well, it has a craft area, but the craft area is set to chemistry station. So this one is not true. So because both this and this were not true, only this one was, this pointer is not going to go here. So if we go ahead now and reload the world again, now that we've saved this, what we should find now is if we come out of here and then once again, we'll continue and load up the world, we should find that this time, because we've used the AND keyword to specify that we want two specific attributes on a recipe, we should then go ahead and see that it's only removed the one from the campfire. So let's go ahead and load the world one more time. And then once it's loaded, luckily we didn't get any yellow text again. So I'm doing well so far. I'm not getting any yellow text apart from what I meant to. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with that. Let's go ahead and look for the glue. And now you can see that the glue is now only showing on the chemistry station. As you can see, the two glue recipes that require the bone and the corn are both there. So as you can see now, the one for the campfire is completely gone, but we still have the ones on the chemistry station that we wanted. There is one more thing that I would like to go over in this episode, and that is how to completely remove and then overwrite a list of ingredients. So for example, I want to go ahead and change the burning barrel player to go ahead and use a completely new set of ingredients. First of all, let's cover how we remove all the ingredients and then we can go ahead and cover how we would then add in the new ones. So let's go to our recipes file here. I'm also going to copy this burning barrel player. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do one here. We're going to say how to completely remove all ingredients from a recipe. There you go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get an X path that goes ahead and first of all, just targets this burning barrel recipe. So let's go ahead and do one of those. As before, we start with the recipes, so slash recipe, then we go or slash recipes, sorry, then we go into the recipe like this. And then on that recipe, we want to go ahead and look at the attributes. We want to find a name attribute in that recipe. Then between the two single quotes here after the equal sign, we're going to go ahead and put in burning barrel player. That's going to go ahead then and find this recipe right here. Then we want to find all ingredients in that recipe. And essentially to do that, we just go ahead and type in slash to go to the ingredients. And then we just type in ingredient just like this. Essentially, what this is going to do is because we haven't specified anything on the ingredients, the pointer is going to say, well, this is an ingredient and this is an ingredient just like that. So the pointer will now be here. Now, if we go ahead and wrap this in a remove X path, then this will remove all the ingredients for that recipe. So we're going to type in remove, close it up here, and then we're going to type X path equals. And then between those two quotes, we're going to go ahead and cut the X path that we just made and put it right there. So this now will just remove every ingredient from the burning barrel player. Then to re-add some ingredients, well, as before, we could just use append. So just like at the very start of this episode where we were adding new ingredients, we are just going to go ahead and do exactly the same. So to add some new ones, let's say um, we'll just go ahead and append X path. And then essentially all we need to do for this one is target the recipe whose name is burning barrel player, right? Because append then goes inside that tag and then adds to the end. So we're going to go ahead and copy essentially this part right here. But this time we don't have to target any ingredients because, well, there are none. So there we go. So we're going to type in an append next path. And then between them, we can go ahead and then add our new ingredients. So we're going to say ingredient name equals. And then let's go ahead and use scrap iron. So resource scrap iron. There you go. So we'll, may we'll maybe make it do some scrap iron. And maybe the count of that is 20. And then maybe some gas cans. So that's going to be ingredient name equals ammo gas can because that's the name of that one. And then count is going to be, let's just say it takes 10 gas cans like that. And finally, we'll add this one right here. Ingredient name equals resource acid and then count equals one. There we go. So now what this is going to do, it's going to remove all the ingredients from the burning barrel 
and then it's going to then add these ones in to the burning barrel afterwards. So one more time, let's go ahead and load up the game and check this happens. So we're going to come out of here, we're going to reload the game and let's see how this goes. So hopefully I haven't spelled any recipe names wrong because I kind of did this from memory, but we're going to keep a lookout with the F1 test for some red or yellow text just to make sure that everything worked properly. But it looks like everything is fine. So I think I do remember the gas can name properly. Remember, you can just look in the recipes XML if you're not sure, because most of the items and stuff are just listed directly in there. So now if we go ahead and look at the burning barrel, um, let's go ahead and look at this. You can see now that, as you can see, I've got the scrap iron, the gas cans and the bottle of acid instead of the wood and the forged iron that it needed before. Now, in this, in, in this instance and in this example, the order that we do this is very, very important. So for example, if I was to go ahead and do this appendix path first and then move this remove one to the bottom here. So I'm actually going to remove this underneath it just like this. If I was to do it this way, well, what do you think would happen? OK, bets are on, guys. I'm going to reload the game and I want you to tell me what you think is going to happen. Do you think it's going to be the same or do you think there's going to be something different? And if so, what do you think is going to happen? Let's go reload the game and we'll find out. So I've gone ahead and saved the file. Make sure I've done that, too. And then we'll go back into our seven days here and let's see what happens this time. So it looks like, well, there is uh, nothing going too bad right now. So it looks like everything is fine. So there we go. So that's all good. But what happens now if I look and type in maybe the burning barrel? Well, as you can see, it's now highlighted in white and it actually has no ingredients. As you can see, all the ingredients have now disappeared. But why is that? We told it to add three new ingredients. So why have they all gone? Well, the reason they have all gone essentially is because we've told it essentially to go ahead and add these ingredients first. But then this X path here tells us to go ahead and just remove absolutely everything. So we end up with no ingredients. So the order of operations that we have done this in is extremely important. We have to go ahead and put this one first and then go ahead and do this. And I'm actually going to change this to completely overwrite all ingredients from a recipe. So these, this example here is overwriting everything. I'm going to pause that so we don't get the burning barrel sound anymore. This is going to overwrite the list of recipes. I remember we need to do the remove first. Um, so I'm actually going to make a note just underneath this. And I'm going to say we always have to remove everything first before using a pen. Otherwise, we will remove everything. <laughs> And essentially, you'll be able to craft it for three, which is obviously something that we don't want. However, there is, and just as a very last little part of this episode, there is a way in one XPath operation to do this just in one. So what we've done essentially is we've removed everything and appended everything. But essentially, that's just like overwriting, right? And there is an XPath operation that allows us to overwrite something, and it's called set. So if we wanted to do this in one go, uh, we're going to say how to completely overwrite all ingredients from a recipe. And this is going to be the quote unquote better way. Because like I said, better is subjective. We can actually use a new XPath operation called set. So what set does is it looks for an it looks for an XPath and it looks for where the pointer is. So set essentially will go and find a pointer. So say if we set this recipe here and we had our pointer here, what it does is anything inside here, it just goes ahead and deletes and then overwrites it with whatever you specify should be there, which is actually very, very useful in certain situations like this. So how do we go ahead and set the new ingredients instead of removing and reappending them? Well, as we did before, let's go ahead and get our next path to the recipe. So we're going to go ahead and we've actually got one right here. So here's the X path to the recipe that we need like this. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to say I'm going to type in set in the space and then X path like this. And then I'm going to put my X path just here. Then I'm going to go ahead and close this up. And then you can see I've got a backslash set that appears right there. I'm going to go ahead and enter this down. And then all I need to do between these two tags 
I'm just going to go ahead and take my ingredients here that I want to overwrite the current list with and just stuff it in there. So essentially what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and find this burning barrel recipe. It's going to go, is this recipe the burning barrel one? It's going to go, yep, this is the one we're looking for. Then it's going to go, okay, anything underneath this recipe. So for example, all the ingredients is going to say, okay, get rid of those. And then it's going to go ahead and take the ingredients I wanted and overwrite them like that. That is what the set X path will do on a recipe. So you can go ahead and overwrite all the ingredients in one operation if you want to. So you can either remove and append or you can go ahead and completely overwrite them just like this. Now, of course, because I've removed and appended and then overwritten like that, I'm using some unnecessary operations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and comment these things out like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and just close my comment right there. Then what we're going to do is one last time for this episode, we're going to go and load the game and see what happens. So let's come out of here. We'll load the game one final time. And you should see that when we come in here, provided we don't have any errors, we should have gone ahead and set the ingredients for this recipe in one single operation, which in, in, in another way is a good way to save time which is super, super cool. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and uh, get this out here. And then here we go. We're going to come into here. And finally, we should see that if we go ahead and target the burning barrel. So let's go ahead and uh, do this one again. So we'll go ahead and look for the burning barrel. There it is right there. You can see now that the list of ingredients have just been overwritten with the set X path, which is awesome. And with that, guys, we come to the end of another episode in the modding tutorial series. Now, before I go ahead and end off this episode, I do have another challenge for you guys to try between this episode and the next one. And of course, if you figure out a way to do it, please go ahead and let me know your code in the comments. What I'd like you to try and do in this one is to go ahead and take a look at the steel crossbow bolts and the steel arrow recipes that you can find in the document. And I want you to go ahead and replace the polymers with feathers. Now you're going to need to use two X paths to do this. You're going to need to use one with a remove command, and then you're going to need to use one with an append command. But the X paths are up to you. Now you can do this with four X paths with using two removes and two appends. But remember the or syntax that we discussed in this episode and try and use it to combine those things into less operations to make it load the fastest. I hope you guys managed to figure out how to do it. And if you did, of course, let me know in the comments. Another thing I want to say as well is I did record and publish a mini episode detailing the new location for the seven days to die mods folder, because in future versions of seven days, the console version is coming out apparently in alpha 22, and then the game is going to load mods from a different location, which means any mods that are in your main seven days to die directory will stop running. However, there is a simple fix in that video. So if you've not seen that at this point, please go ahead and check that out as well. But guys, that's going to be all for this episode. I know it was a long one and there was actually a lot of X paths in this one. So I hope you guys managed to follow along. But of course, if there is anything that you needed help with, or if you've managed to find some other cool things with the stuff you've learned in this episode, please go ahead and let me know in the comments. And of course, if you need any help with anything, also let me know. And if I know how to, then of course I will. And if I don't, I'll go ahead and point you to someone that maybe does. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So until then, bye.